up to everybody. Can you hear me okay in the back? Christy, hands up. Can you hear me in the back? How about now? Testing. Thank you. Welcome, everybody, this morning to the uh, launch of the Algoma Cancer Report 2015. I want to thank all of you for taking time to come today to hear uh, the overview of our report that will uh, be put on our website the presentation today. Uh, I want to actually take a moment and thank uh, our writing team. And actually, the, the writing team um, was composed of a number of our programs here at Algoma Health, Public Health. And it really speaks to the slide, actually, you can go back, that we have as our introductory slide. It's the healthy lifestyle slide. And I think if we take a look at the programs that were involved in the uh, writing of this particular report, I'm going to go through them so you can see the cross-section of input that this particular report actually uh, involved. Our infection control program was involved. Our chronic disease and injury uh, pr uh, program was involved. And a, a big focus on our smoke-free Ontario program as well as our cancer prevention um, uh, part of our program. The vaccine preventable sexual health uh, programs were involved. Our epidemiologist was involved and of course our communications and media. So we had an awesome writing team and our, our report is extremely comprehensive um, to the work that we do here at Oklahoma Public Health. And as you know, one of the key roles of public health is to assess our communities, um, do a statistical review of trends and, and data that we have in the community, and then report it. So that is why we're here today, to give you some information on what's happening around cancer in our community. If the last report we delivered was in 2004, and it was a smaller report. This particular report, as I said, is very comprehensive with a focus on prevention and looking at the role we all play in preventing cancer in ourselves individually as well as the community's role in preventing cancer in our community. So it really has a, a combination of data as well as what can we do. And you'll see that in our call to action that we, we give to you today. So today's event is a very high level summary. After the event, the, like I said, the entire report will be on our website. So at this time, I'm going to introduce two very key people that were instrumental in writing this report. Uh, Jordan Robson, who is our epidemiologist, he joined our team last year and was instrumental in really pulling the data together. And Michelle Lockhart, who is our key writer, and she's going to be speaking about prevention and giving us some content around prevention. So Jordan, I'm going to let you come up and do your piece. Um, hi everybody, and thanks for coming. Um, I just wanted to give you guys a little bit of background on just kind of what the data is and a little bit of details about it. So it comes from the Ontario, Ontario Cancer Registry. It was pulled via a program called SIRSTAT that's provided by Cancer Care Ontario. Um, it only goes up to 2009. Cancer data is very complex to process and it takes a while to do all the linkages between the various hospitals and different care providers. So the, the data is usually a couple years behind. Um, most of the information you'll see today is presented as an age standardized rate. Um, I'll explain what that is on the next slide. Um, the comparability between past reports, because cancer is such a multifaceted and complex disease, the way that they classify cancer can change over the years. So that's just a caution. When you're comparing even to our past report from um, 84 to 1999, the numbers might not be directly comparable because they come up with new ways to classify cancer. Um, you can compare trends generally, so a general trend going up or down is, is fine, just the exact number comparison side by side isn't technically the most valid comparison. And to determine statistical significance, we use something called a confidence interval method. Um, the confidence interval just kind of gives you a range where you'd expect the, the, the estimate to vary by chance, so you'll see that on the graph that I'll present in a moment. Um, this is just to illustrate what age, standard, age standardization does. So basically, as you can see, the, um, the rate of cancer is considerably higher in an older, in, as you get older. Um, if we didn't age standardize the results, when comparing Algoma to Ontario, differences between our two regions could be strictly due to the age. So if Algoma had a higher population of seniors, then we would 
be likely to have a higher incidence of cancer because seniors more often get cancer. So we just took that out as an explanatory factor. Um, so the differences that you see today will not be due to age. Um, so the first bit of information I'll present is about the cancer incidence. So incidence basically means the number of newly diagnosed cases between the years 2000 and 2009. Um, it does not refer to the number of people who have cancer during that period, that's a different measurement. So it's just the number of newly diagnosed cases. Um, so this is just an overview of all the cancers in the report. Um, just very quickly, the green bars are areas where we're lower than the province, the red bars are areas where we're higher than the province, and brown is where we're not different than the province. Um, I won't be presenting all of these numbers today, I'll only be presenting the numbers that are on the the blue person diagram that you've all been given. Um, so pretty quickly, these are the four most <coughs> common types of cancer. Colorectal, lung and bronchus, female breast cancer, and prostate cancer in males. Combined, these four cancers account for approximately 54% of all cancers in Algoma, and that's pretty consistent throughout the province and our peer group. Um, our peer group is a group of health units including North Bay, Prey Sound, Sudbury, and District, Temiskaming, and Thunder Bay. Um, the Ministry of Ontario and Health and Long-Term Care defines what a peer group is based on a variety of factors that I won't go into now, but they've tried to give us a, a group that we can compare to that should be very similar to us. Um, so the incidence for all cancers in the Algoma rate is higher statistically than the province. We're at about 427 cases per 100,000 people. Um, the province is at 410 and our peer group's at 439. Um, you'll notice that males are more likely to get cancer than females, as presented. The incidence rate of males is almost 100 um, cases higher than females. Um, prostate cancer, this is the most common cancer in Algoma and in the province. Um, we're actually lower than the provincial, the provincial <coughs> estimate. We're at 118 cases per 100,000. And the province and our peer group are both at 134. Breast cancer in females were not statistically different than the province. Um, just the confidence intervals thing I was talking about, see these little bars here? So that creates a range where the value could ultimately, due to random chance, could be anywhere in there. So as long as these bars don't, so this bar includes this bar, so that means that they're not statistically different. Um, so for breast cancer, you can see our bar overlapped with the Ontario bar and the peer group bar, so we're not statistically higher or lower than they are. Um, for lung and bronchus cancer, we are statistically higher than the province. Um, our rate is at 64.7 per 100,000, and the Ontario rate is at 52.5. Um, our peer group is similar to us at 68.6. Um, colorectal cancer, we're not statistically different than the province. We're at 50.7 cases per 100,000, and Ontario is at 49 cases per 100,000. Esophageal cancer, we are higher than the province at 6.2 cases per 100,000. The province is at 4.1. Um, this is most drastic in, female, in males compared to females. Uh, urinary bladder cancer, we are also higher than the province in um, at 16 cases per 100,000 versus 12 for the province. Again, there's a big split between the male and female rates. Kidney and renal pelvis cancer, we are statistically different than the province. This is the last one, just a bad room, a three in a row. Mm -hmm. um, so it's not as big of a split between males and females, but we're at 12.6 per 100,000, whereas the province is at 10.4. Um, liver cancer, our rate is 2.3 cases per 100,000, and we are statistically lower than the province on that. Um, not a massive split between males and females. Uh, lastly, I'm just gonna touch on cancer mortality quick. We don't outline as many cancer mortality cases in the report, just there's a lot of smaller numbers with this, incidence is more common. So I guess it's good that we're treating people and they aren't dying of cancer as often as they're getting. Um, so mortality refers to the number of deaths due to specified cancer that's the primary cause. So if you had cancer and died of another cause, it wouldn't count as mortality due to cancer. Um, so our all cancer mortality is at 186 cases per 100,000 people and we're slightly higher than the province. And on par with our peer group. Um, males are more likely to die from cancer than females. And the only cancer that in the report that we're higher than the province on for mortality is lung, lung and bronchial cancer. Uh, we're at 52 cases per 100,000 and the province is at 41. 
Um, and I'll switch over to Michelle, where she'll be talking about prevention. Seven to ten servings of vegetables and fruit a day. We're supposed to choose high fiber, low, lower fat foods, and uh, the Canada Food Guide is an excellent reference. Um, be physically active on a, a regular basis, and that's 150 minutes per week. And the Canadian Physical Activity Guidelines is, is a good reference. Maintain a healthy body weight. Protect yourself and your family from the sun, and that's throughout the entire year. It's not just in the summer months, it's in the winter months as well and avoid the use of um, tanning beds. Participate in regular um, cancer screening, and the Ontario, um, Cancer Care Ontario, they operate um, three breast screening, oh, sorry, three programs, breast, cervical, and colorectal, and they're available locally. Report any changes to your healthcare provider or dentist, and follow health and safety instructions at home and at work when using, storing, or disposing of hazardous materials. So really, what is the role of public health? Well, we support healthy public policy, and um, we engage and work with community partners, we increase public awareness, we create enabling environments, and we, we allocate health services. And it's the Ottawa Charter that really helps to guide the work of public health. Um, this next slide just has some examples of um, health-promoting policies, and I'm not going to read through them. So, Lifestyle risk factors in Algoma. So how do we measure up? Keep in mind that this is self-reported data from a survey of Algoma residents. So 23.6 um, people indicate that they're current smokers. 44.3% are physically inactive. 60.2 have a BMI body mass index greater than 25. 61.8 eat less than five servings of fruits and vegetables per day, and 20.7 report excessive alcohol consumption. I don't know about you, but I was, when you start to read that, it, it doesn't look so great. So we have lots of work that we can do as a group, as a community, but also as individuals. Because I think a lot of times people think when it comes to cancer that they can't do anything about it, that they're gonna get it, they're gonna die, and that's not true. So the conclusions, Really, we need to improve our lifestyle choices. We need to participate in regular cancer screening. Know your normal, so that if something changes, you can tell your, your dentist, say, there's something wrong. There's something wrong in my mouth, I'm not sure about it. You can talk to your healthcare provider. Um, the implementation of health-promoting policies. Community-based partnerships, we can't highlight that enough. How important it is to improve access to health information and to support healthier lifestyles. Because we really want to make the healthy choice the easy choice. I'll welcome Lori back to uh, present on our call to action. Thanks, Jordan and uh, Michelle. We've received a lot of information. The report is uh, um, has additional information, additional data, and additional uh, interpretation of the data. But the big part of putting a report out is actually putting a call to action out. And 
Michelle has alluded to a lot of things that are happening already in our community, in the province, that really supports the work of public health and the work of the partnerships that we have in our community. Um, so we know we are doing a lot, but we want to do more. So we've identified a number of call to actions in our um, report, and I'm just going to quickly go through. So identify and implement policies that support access to safe and nutritious foods. We need to do that as a community. There are things happening at the school board level. There are things happening in pockets of our communities across Alabama. But this is something we need to do a little bit better. Increase opportunities and access for Algoma residents to participate in regular physical activity. This is something that we all can take a look at in regard to what we're doing again right across the community. Work to reduce the exposure to tobacco alcohol, radon, and other environmental contaminants. Work together to set realistic targets to, for the reduction of alcohol in Algoma, and work together to reduce smoking rates by 5% in five years. And this is a target that we established. As we worked on this report, we wanted to sort of have a target that we could measure and really showcase over time that we're going to make a difference and this was one particular one that we wanted to put a measurement on as an organization and to help us move this securing a significant um, reduction in smoking rates across Algoma and doing this will require the support of community partners and other uh, community organizations so through uh, a partnership that we have established through our smoke free Ontario work Algoma Public Health, on behalf of this, these partners, will be moving forward to finalize some conditional funding that we are able to garner through the Sault Ste. Marie Medical Association. This particular funding is going to support a system that improves quit supports and referrals for smokers. So this is one thing that's going to give us a bit of a leg up. If we get this funding, we're going to be working with our partners and really start looking at how we can move this five in five, we call it over the next five years. So this is something that we're really going to be paying attention to and making it something that we can measure over the next five years. So can carrying on with call to action, we're going to work together to increase the number of radon test kits sold in Algoma District by 10% in five years. So another measurable um, action item that we know we want to do and really influence in the community. We're going to work together to increase the number of people who report home radon test results to Algoma Public Health 5% in five years. So we're using that theme five and five and we're wrapping it around this report. Continue to work together to increase public awareness of risk factors associated with cancer. Michelle did a fabulous job at how we can start communicating to the community at large that we have a role to protect our own health around cancer and, and that's a real big theme of our report. Continue to encourage the public to participate in provincially funded cancer screening programs. Early identification is really key to moving prevention and uh, intervention around cancer. Continue to monitor and report on cancer trends associated with risk factors. Continue to work to improve equitable access to prevention and treatment services. We want to make sure that we're reaching people that are hard to reach when it comes to to um, moving any action around health, we really need to look at a universal approach, but also look at a, a populations that are, aren't quite getting to medical services and, and making sure that we are taking a health equity look at this, this action as well. Together we can influence a reduction in the incidence of mortality rates of cancer in the, the District of Algoma. So moving forward, the full report will be available to you if you have any general questions, we are open to those questions, and we're open to take a few at this time. Okay. And also, the media will be doing one-on-one -on -one at the end, so if you want to stick around, we'll be here to answer any of your questions. Not hearing any questions, I'm going to wrap up. We have a bit of refreshments. Please join us. If you have questions you want to chat with us about, we're here. Thank you for coming today.